If you've been doing this JavaScript thing for a while, it, you have been around long enough to hear things like JavaScript is single threaded, or even to have used set timeout to have asynchronous code. Since that time, JavaScript has evolved a lot and we have tons of stuff. And we even have affordances to make multi-threaded JavaScript. So now we are going to have a look on how to leverage this and which are the cases that would make that worthwhile. So JavaScript by default is fundamentally single threaded, which means we do all our work in a single thread of execution. That means that even when you're writing asynchronous code like promises or a fetch, what happens is that this code has one thread to work with, but then the engine is very smart to jump between the tasks very fast to the point that it feels like they're happening in parallel, but processing in fact is not. But with web workers, we can actually establish a secondary thread, or as we call it, a worker thread. Now this thread is safer, to deal with because it doesn't have all the methods that the main thread does. So we cannot, for example, change the DOM and stuff like that from that thread. So some APIs are limited, but those threads communicate with each other, like the main thread with the worker threads via a message system, which is quite comfortable to use. So today we're going to jump into this code and implement that and see like what happens with a synchronous code and what happens when we have a task that even on a synchronous code, like even in a promise, it can freeze up our code. And how is the most ergonomic way to deal with web workers in a solid start app? So as usual, we have the app running. It's a solid start app. And I only set the preset for Dino deploy because that's where I'm shipping this app to. And we have the Comlink plugin. A Comlink is a library that's going to make dealing with web workers a little bit more ergonomic than it is by default. And we're going to see soon how it goes. So the Comlink is to help us in the Vite bundling to have the, co the web workers in a separate bundle. So now that we're ready to take the configuration out of the way, we can go into the task that we're going to create. As you can see in my library, I have one task and that task is just going to do an enormous amount of work to the point that it's going to be a little bit too much for my JavaScript runtime. And then I'm running this, this task through two different wrappers. One function that I'm going to call is entirely synchronous and it's just going to run the task and that's it. The other one is asynchronous. And that one, we are actually going to run in a promise. Okay. So let's see how our app works. So I created this action state that's going to help me let us give you some feedback about if the task is running or not. It's just a span that's going to populate the button. And my work state is a couple of signals. So I have one for each time I'm calling it. And it's just either idle or running. And then I have these little buttons here that you can see they're red. And they have, they're going to set the state whenever I trigger the on click. And then once the action is complete, it's going to set it back to idle. So then we know how long it took. And this happens for the sync, which is just going to call the function and the async one, which is going to put the function inside the promise. While these tasks are running, for us to evaluate, I have a counter, which is the same one that comes from the basic template in solid. So, so I'm just showing up how many times the button was clicked and that's it. So now let's see how the synchronous task works. So as you can see, it's fully responsive. And as I click on triggering it, everything freezes. I'm clicking like crazy over here. 
and nothing shows. And the task is going to freeze the UI while it's running because it's way too intense. And by the time it's done, all those clicks come crushing in. So there's no way for me to show a pending state or anything else to my button. So the user click, I click like 46 times and it's still there. Technically for this kind of work, we want to put that into a promise because then it's going to be asynchronous. But remember, we're in a single thread still, which means that the engine is going to jump between the two tasks in order to make it seamlessly and pretend they're working parallel. But what happens if one task is too much? Let's see again, still working the button. And now I'm going to trigger the promise to run. As you can see, I get no feedback while it's running. And as I click, it's still frozen because it's one task and it's extremely heavy for the engine. So it doesn't, it's not able to jump between them. And as the task completes, it comes back in. So as you can see, it's freezing the UI and this is not a good UX. I cannot show anything else. My user is stuck waiting for this task to finish. So what's the solution for this? And to address this, we then create a web worker. So let's jump into my lib in the comlink worker. And what we do is comlink is going to give us an expose method. That's basically going to wrap my worker and expose it with the types that I need and so on. And then inside my worker, which is just an object, I'm going to create a method that's called run heavy duty. And this is the same task as the, my other promise button has triggered, but I'm going to run in a separate thread. And then I expose a type of my worker and there you go with this. With this expose, I'm telling Vite about what to do with my worker from the chunk and then import them in the browser. And then as we go back to my module, I go into the button and I create this new worker. And by creating the new worker, I finally then can wrap my worker and grab the run heavy duty task. And I can run that task inside that worker. So let's see how it performs. First, everything ready. I resetted my, my screen and now I can trigger. And as you can see, I get a feedback that it's running. My UI is extremely responsive. The user can do pretty much everything and it's done. And we can see here that it took about 11 seconds to run this task. So let's try again and compare with the other ones. So let's compare with the promise. The promise is running, no feedback, and let's see how long it takes. Same 11 seconds, but from this time, my UI was frozen. And to make a full comparison, let's compare it to the synchronous one and the only, over, the only overhead that it has is that it's running the task. So there's no additional code. There's no messaging sent around. There's no concurrency set up. Let's compare. So as you can see, in terms of processing, the worker thread is as powerful as the main thread. And in fact, it can be more powerful because we are completely splitting up. So we have the advantage of processing power being separated between the two tasks. And on the same level field, they perform exactly the same. So I hope this code adds yet another tool to your tool belt. So whenever you're dealing with some big computation or if you want to isolate work from the main thread, you can do that. So you, can, you don't even need to do that only for performance reasons. You can do that if you have a specific code, like even a third party code that you want to isolate from being able to change your DOM. That can give you like an extra layer of security in some cases and can also make sure that your main thread is protected if anything changes that you cannot control and for sure it's not going to jeopardize the user experience of your app. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions for follow-ups and if nothing else, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.